Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. In the first lesson of the second section, we're going to take a look at primary keys and indexing rules and guidelines. And we're going to continue working on the Night Movies database from the beginner's course. Now, if you haven't sat or been through the beginner's course, and this is the first time that you're seeing this, you'll find all of the files that I'm working with in the course files folder so you can follow along. And basically what we have here is the basic structure for a movie rental database. And we've got to a certain point in the development of this database. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to take a closer look at primary keys, indexes and indexing rules and guidelines. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the navigation pane because currently we have that hidden from view. Now, a quick way to do that is simply to press the F11 key on your keyboard and that's going to open up that pane on the left hand side. So we can now see all of the tables that make up this database, all of the queries, all of the forms, reports and macros. And we're really going to focus in on the actor table in this particular lesson. So let's double click on Tibble Actor to open it up. Now you can see here we have roughly eight columns of information. We have the ID field, the full actor name, given names, family name, gender, birth country, born date and died date if applicable. Now the ID field that you see in that first column is the primary key field for this table. How do we know that? Well, if we switch into design view and before I do that, I'm going to close down the navigation form. If we right click and go into design view, you can see that we have that little key icon next to the ID field. Also, if we take a look up on the table design ribbon in the tools group, we can see that primary key is highlighted. So this table has one primary key field and it's the ID field. Now, what does the ID field do in a table? Well, it uniquely identifies the record in a table. Now, technically, you don't have to have a primary key, but almost all tables you'll come across do have one. And in this actor table, the number that you see in here, whilst it uniquely identifies the record, it doesn't really have too much of a relationship with the actual actor name. Now, if we jump back into design view and make sure that we have that ID field selected, if you take a look at the field properties at the bottom, you can see that this field is indexed. Now the primary key field isn't the only field in this table that's indexed. Let's click on actor name. Is this one indexed? Yes, it is. No duplicates. Given names? No, that field isn't indexed. Family name is, gender is, birth country is, born date isn't, and died date isn't. So about half of these fields that we have in this table are indexed. Now, I would hope that if you are coming to this advanced course, having already sat the beginner's course, then you're going to understand what indexing is. But just in case, let's take a moment to look at the purpose of indexes. Now, as I mentioned, the ID values that you see in that first column have no relation to the actual actors themselves. Those numbers are automatically assigned when we add records to the table. So as actors are added, they are added at the end of the table and they're given the next number. So if we delete somebody from the table, the ID does not become available to someone else. For example, if I was to delete record number three, Leonardo DiCaprio, and then add somebody new to the bottom of the table, they won't be given the ID of three because these IDs are always unique even after you've deleted a record. Now, something that's very common and something you might want to do in this table is maybe we want to search for an actor, let's say Henry Fonda. And let's pretend for a second that the only field that we have indexed in this table is the ID field. So without any other indexes available, the only way that Access can find Henry Fonda is to start at the top of the table and check to see if each record is Henry Fonda until it gets all the way down to row 17, where we actually have Henry Fonda. So that's quite a process intensive task. Now, we have a reasonably small data set just here, but imagine if you had hundreds of thousands of rows without indexing on the actor name field your search is going to be a lot slower because it has to go through every single row of the table, checking to see if it's the actor that you're looking for. Now, what indexing does is it just makes this process a lot quicker. What we could do here is make the actor's whole name an index field. 
So if we right click and go back into design view, actor name just here, this is where you would come to change that. So mine's set to yes already, duplicates okay. So this field is indexed. So what it basically means is that if someone searches, Access will maintain a lookup index and it will go straight to Henry Fonda and it will return the record. So indexes basically allow the search to go directly to the record without searching through other records. Now that's all good in theory, however, not all queries are this simple. Now, maybe we want to run another search, but we want to search for all actors born in the USA before 1930, whose first name is Henry. So again, you might imagine searching through all of the records. Now, imagine if we had 100,000 records, that could take some time. But if we have an index on birth country, that would certainly help. And if we had an index on given name, we could go to all of the Henrys and that would give us a subset to begin with. So if those were the kinds of searches that people were doing on my database, I would definitely make sure that things like the birth country are indexed and also things like the given name. So currently I have mine set to no, let's double click and change it to yes. Now that's fine, but remember with each new index, there is an increased load when it comes to maintenance. That means whenever data is changed, maybe actors are added to the database or if the records are modified, then the indexes need to be maintained as well. And we find that the cost of improved querying is deterioration in the performance of updates. So how you achieve this balance is entirely up to you and how you work. If it's more important to have slick updates or slick queries, that will depend on the nature of the database and the use. So if you have a database where the data is fairly stable, but there are many, many people querying the database, then it's going to be more important for you to have fast queries. However, if we have lots of updates going on in the database, maybe we're constantly adding or removing things and not many people are running queries, then the opposite is true. And there are some basic rules and guidelines surrounding things like primary keys and indexing. Now, one thing you need to remember is that the primary key is always indexed and we can have up to 32 indexed fields. Now, there are certain types of fields that you can't index. For example, you can't index a long text field. So if you have a field in a table that maybe houses a description of a product, the description is normally quite a long field and in general people wouldn't be searching your database based off of the description. They're more likely to search on something like the product ID or the product name. So not all fields can be indexed. Now where you have a field that has a limited number of values, so maybe something like gender, generally speaking, indexing gender will not really help when it comes to query performance. However, in more modern databases in 2023, where more genders are recognized, then you may well need to introduce a gender index. So which fields you index is entirely up to you, but it's good to bear in mind these little guidelines. Now, if we take a look back at our table, I'm just gonna select the birth country field. You can see here that this is indexed and it says duplicates okay. Now, clearly with something like country, duplicates will occur because we could have multiple actors born in the same country. So in this case, duplicates would be okay. The same applies to something like given names. We could theoretically have actors with the same given names. Now, all of these decisions that you make about your indexing are not final. You can always change them later on. So if something isn't working for you, you can go back in and you can add or remove an index later on. And if you haven't really used indexes before, you might just want to remove the index from the gender field in the table to get yourself familiar. So if we take a look at gender just here, you can see that currently this is indexed. And as I mentioned, because this is a limited field, I wouldn't necessarily index this. So just to have a little practice, you might want to not index this field and save the table. Once you've done that, I will see you in the next lesson where we're going to speak a little bit more about primary keys and indexing. In this lesson, we're going to talk a little bit more about indexes and some of the specific features of indexes. We're going to talk about composite indexes, auto indexing, and also the effect of compact and repair. So we're working back in our night movies database. I'm going to press F11 to open up our navigation pane because we want to open up tuple actor one more time. 
and I'm going to close down the navigation form and let's jump into design view. Now if we take a look at our fields here, actor name is an indexed field. We can see that in our field properties. It says indexed, yes, no duplicates. So if I wanted to search for an actor by their full name, for example, Henry Fonda, I could do that. However, there is an alternative to this approach. Now the actor name in this particular table is made up of two other fields, given name and family name. So let's switch back to datasheet view so we can see this a bit more clearly. We have a column that has the full actor name, but we also have two other columns which shows the given name, that's the first name, and another column for family name. So what we could do here is treat given name as an indexed field, family name as an index field, and the two together as a composite index field. Because then, if we search for Henry Fonda, instead of searching the actor name field, what Access will do is look up an index that has two parts. The first part is Henry, the second part is Fonda. And this in general is going to be more efficient for your database. So how do we set this up? Well, what we can do is we can go to the Table Design tab and notice in the Show Hide group we have an Indexes button. So let's click this because this is going to show us the indexes that exist within this current table. So you can see those are all the fields that are indexed. Now, as I mentioned previously, in general, I wouldn't index the gender field. And this might be something that you changed in the previous lesson because I did tell you just to practice that. But if you didn't, let's just delete out gender from our index. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to create my composite index and I'm going to call it first last. The first field is going to be the given name and the sort order is ascending. And then the next field name is going to be the family name. I don't need to actually add the index name again just here because Access will recognize that there's a blank there and know that this is a composite index that we're creating. Now I could carry on going. I could have up to 10 fields as part of my composite index. We're just going to have the two. Now, another important thing to note here is that the given name field doesn't need its own index. If we were to just search on given name, Access would use this composite index, but only the first part of it. Whereas with the family name, we would need to leave the index for family name because it doesn't search that part of the composite index. So just a little FYI there. So let's close this indexes dialog box and our composite index has been created. Now I'm going to jump back into indexes because I want to take a closer look at this primary key field. Now, as we've already mentioned, primary key values must be unique. But a primary key can actually be a composite index. Now, if that's the case, although the key overall must be unique, the individual component field values might not be unique. However, no field used in the primary key can have a null value. So if we just select family name just here and take a look at the index properties, you can see it says primary, no, unique, no, ignore nulls, no. So when Access is building its index, what happens if the family name is null? Well, if ignore nulls is set to no, as it is here, then there is still an entry placed in the index for the family name. But for the index value, there is null. And we might well expect that in a large table with an index where ignore nulls is set to no, you might have a number of records where this particular index has a null value. Now, if you say ignore nulls is yes, then any records where there is a null value will not have an entry in that index. Now, generally speaking, the default is ignore nulls no. But if you do want to exclude null values from an index, then you want to set this to yes. Now, note, for a composite index, the index value will only be null if every individual field value is null as well. So if any of the individual field values are not null, then the composite index value will not be null as well. So just a couple of points to bear in mind there. The next thing I want to speak to you about is auto indexing. Now, suppose we want to add a new field to this table and I'm just going to call it test and we'll leave it on short text. Now, note down in the properties area, the default where it says indexed is set to no for this field. Let's add another field into this table, but this time I'm going to call it num underscore 
test. Notice the difference. If we take a look down in the field properties area, it says indexed, yes. What about if I add test underscore ID? That is also set to indexed, yes. So what is the difference between this first one when we just have test and these other two? Well, this relates to a little setting in access options. So let's jump up to file and go down to options and we want to go to the object designer page. Now in this first section here, table design view, this is the option that we're looking for, auto index on import create. And you can see we have some items in here, ID, key, code and num separated by semicolons. So if you create a table where the name of the field begins or ends with any of those four, the field is going to be auto indexed. Now, of course, you could change this. For example, I could remove num from here and therefore anything that starts or ends with the word num is not going to be auto indexed. I could replace this with something else if I wanted specific fields to be auto indexed and then make sure I use that keyword in the name of my field. So you can modify this, but in general, these are the default items. Now I'm just going to cancel on here because I don't really want to make any changes to that field. And then we're just going to delete these rows that we added into the table. Now, the final thing I'd like to speak to you about in this particular lesson is compact and repair and the effect that that can have on your database. Now, as part of your maintenance schedule, you should be running compact and repair regularly on your database. And this is especially important where you have a lot of indexes because what compact and repair does is it basically goes through and it tidies up all of the tables in your database and rebuilds all of those indexes. So this is really good if you find that your database is getting a bit sluggish or maybe the performance is poor. Running a compact and repair is really going to help. It's going to make your database run a lot more efficiently. And it's something that I strongly recommend that you do on a regular basis. Now, we did cover compact and repair in the beginners course, but just as a quick reminder, because it's so simple, if we jump up to file and go into info, this is where you have the compact and repair option. I highly recommend implementing a regular schedule just to run this to fix any existing problems and also to prevent problems further down the line. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.